Hey everybody, Paul Fontaine here with the Joy of Wrestling third episode, and uh, my my very special guest straight from the UK is uh, my good friend Darren Daza Wadsworth, and uh, we're recording at a different time, just you know, so it's easier for him because when I normally do the show, it'd be like four a.m. I think for him and on a Monday, which is probably not ideal for recording. So uh, Daza, how how are you doing this uh, fine Saturday evening? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's quite late here, but I um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to this. Thanks for. Well, you're me. looking, you're looking good. You're looking good. Yeah. So I'm. I I gotta say, you were one of the people I was definitely gonna ask to be on this show. And then when I when I kind of announced that I was doing it, you immediately reached out and said, "I demand to be on this show." And I'm like, "Well, that's good that you said that because I was gonna ask you anyways." Um, and I was fully expecting you, as a you know, as as I've known you and people that know you very well probably have heard you on podcasts or maybe read your writing and you, you know, you're obviously a very big fan of women's wrestling and women's MMA. Um, you used to do great stuff on half guarded, um, you know, doing the Invicta shows and, and, and that, and the, you know, and always on social media about the women's stuff. So I was ex fully expecting this to be about stardom or maybe we're going to talk about Stasha and Bailey from takeover or, you know, like, I don't know, but uh, you, you surprised me with, with what you went with, but, uh, in a good way so so uh tell tell the people i mean i did kind of preview it but you know if sometimes people just click on the link what, what are we going to be talking about today um well it's a show in um 2008 that occurred here in the uk in um, coventry and it's basically a show that i i went to live and it's when um, pro wrestling noah uh, came to the uk and it was the okay. uh, the european navigation to have recorded. I mean, it was actually two shows, I think, because the first one sold so well. Uh, yeah. They did a second show somewhere in England. But this this was like the main, you know, the main card that they did. And it's a show that I was just, it was one of these things that at that time, the only shows I'd ever been to were um, uh, some uh, WWE house shows, some okay. um, small little British shows. And I've been to a couple of TV tapings as well. Uh, a WWE TV tapings uh, that this was like this just felt like huge at the time you know the fact that Noah were coming from the UK it felt yeah. like a, like a once in the lifetime thing I don't I don't know if he ever actually went to America as as a company I know some of the stars did that this was just like oh my god this is like I've got to be their life and also it was in Coventry which is actually mo most shows sort of like take place in London or down south from where, where I am, I live north in Yorkshire, and this one was quite like about like a two and a half hour drive from me, which you know, so it was like, and also it was in a a decent um, decent arena, in a sort of that was basically in an area that you didn't have to go into a, a dodgy part of town to go to. Which, to be honest, a lot of yeah. So, so, so when some of like like Ring of Honor came on, so some of the, the places that we went to were sort of you know. You, you, you had to sort of like, you know, but, but had to be careful about sort of which route you went in to get to and let's put it that way. But this one was in a, a really accessible area. So it was just one that I, I got a ticket from immediately. Um, they, they did, I think it was a sellout. And I, I even got it before the card was announced. So I didn't know what was coming. I just knew that it was, I had to be. It was Noah. Place. Yeah. Uh, and were you watching Noah regularly at the time or you just, you know, you, you just knew that it was something you, you had to see? Uh, well, Noah was actually on UK TV because around about this time, um, Br British wrestling had, had a really big, as, even aside from WWE, it was a real hotbed yeah. for, for smaller mm -hmm. shows. A lot of like uh, Americans from Ring of Honor and TNA used to come over here um, to, to do like the sort of the independent shows. There was a promotion called the FWA, uh, which our, um, our mutual friend Lisa Gifford actually used to be their ring yeah. announcer. And, um, and, Around this time, there was a channel called the, the Wrestling Channel, which was a, uh, it ended up like failing after a couple of years, but for a time it, it had some really great stuff on there. And one of the, one of my, well, actually my favorite show on there was Pro Wrestling Noah, which used to wear shows on, on there, which were just um, only like a couple of months um, out of date, you know, so for a rarely reason. And so I, you know, people knew who they were, you know, and people were into like sort of, you know, the, the current sort of like, you know, titles and everything. So it, it was like a real big deal. And so, and at that time it was when you had, um, you had Kenta Kabashi, you had Masawa, you had Kenta, 
Uh, oh. You know, Morishima. It, it was a great time. I mean, to be honest, I at that time I would put that roster they had against any in the world. Uh, so yeah, so I was um, yeah, so I was well well aware of who everybody was and everything. You know, so yeah, I, um, yeah, it, it was well, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I we got we got Noah here. Um, I think it was around the same time. But it, we were getting it on like a delay, and by delay mm. I mean like might have even been like a couple year delay. Um, okay. But so I was seeing Masawa matches after he died, um, you know, yeah. like knowing he was going to die, and and we're you know we're watching that. But you know we were getting the history. The announcers did a really good job, and I think it might have even been it's probably whatever shows you were getting because the announcer uh, had an English accent. The two announcers mm. had English accents. So I assume that we probably, the fight network here in Canada probably just bought the rights to, to those tapes mm. and aired them here. So we did get a lot of this. Um, I don't remember this show in particular, but like looking at the lineup, like, Oh man, if I was there, I, I think I definitely would have wanted to be there. I mean, you, you brought up ring of honor and, and you know, they were pretty big in the UK. I, I know they, um, you know, whenever they would go there, they would do great crowds. And there's a few, uh, you know, people on this show, uh, Jay Briscoe, Brian Danielson, Eddie Edwards, N Nigel McGuinness that were, you know, ring of honor mainstays. And um, so, when you, so you said you got the tickets before you knew what the card was going to be, but obviously you knew the card was going to be good. So was in terms of like the concept of the show. And for those that don't know, it's, it's a, it's a show or a match or a moment in your wrestling fandom that made you happy. So for you, was it, um, was it the something that happened on the show itself or just the idea that you got to be at this show or was it something else? I mean, it was a combination of the two. But for, for a start, it was that, like I say, at this time, this felt like something really special that I was going to, yeah. you know. And, and a, as a you know, a wrestling fan at the time, I was a big observer reader, and I was trying to follow as many of the sort of different groups as I, as I could. It just this just felt really special. But what really did it for for me is uh, when I saw what the main event was going to be, because yeah. the main event was basically Masawa and Marafuji versus um go shizuki and kenta kabashi and yeah. when i saw that basically i was going to see kabashi and misawa on opposite sides it, it, even though it was a tag match this was just like whoa you know <laughs> this was this, this was like guns and roses coming and slashing yeah. that so be uh, but you know it felt that was it felt big. It felt, you know, but this would oh, yeah. give us something special here. Because at that time, um, Kabashi and Misawa had not had a singles match for a long time, I remember. But I think they used to get together in tags occasionally. But it was like a rare thing that they would do this. It, it, you know, it, it, it felt special. And, I mean, I'll talk about the, the main event first because that was like the, the big thing about the, the show. And when it got to that main event, as they're basically getting ready to come out, all around me, the, the, the audience, and the audience was a hardcore audience, they were really, you know, really up for, for, for this show. People around me were just saying, I'm going to see Masawa, I'm going to see Kabashi. <laughs> it, it was like a real, um, just a really sort of excitement, like, you know, butterflies in your stomach when you, when you, when you sort of like saw that this is what you were going to get. And it's so probably like for... I was gonna say for American fans, it would probably be like seeing Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan for the first time, you yeah. know. Like, but but I mean, different. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean yeah. to interrupt you, but just want some context. Yes. Okay, so anyway, the two of uh, basically the the match starts, crowds going notes, and early on, like Kabashi and Masawa get in there. Okay, and the crowd sort of like you know, there's like the stare downs, anticipation. Everyone's like real excited, and then we just did like a couple little basic. Things I think they might have actually done a few chops and a, a clothesline, and then they like tagged out. It wasn't anything special, so I sort of like figured, well, you know, because Kabashi at this time was really banged up. I mean, he was walking with a limp even when he was in the ring, and, and Miss Sal was still like, you know, sort of real, you know, really strong, you know, wrestler. But he was sort of, it was a little bit older, a little bit bigger, and so you thought, well, Shizuki and um, Marifuji are going to be the workhorses in this match. They're going to be carrying the wrestling. And Kabashi and Misawa are going to come in there and basically go in there and just basically be the stars. And it'll be, yeah. which I'm fine with. But I, so I'm understanding what the 
what the matchup's going to be like, you know, I'm sort of, you know, etc. It's Kabashi and Misawa, it's, it's going to be cool. So the match goes out about 20 minutes later. And as Noah matches tended to be with Tiger, they're starting yeah. to basically, you know, everything's going like nuts and fast and everything. So even though I thought that basically, you know, that Misawa and Kabashi aren't going to be sort of like, you know, doing a great deal, 20 minutes in, they're in there, they're chopping the hell out of each other. They're swapping suplexes, they're coming off the top rope. I think Kabashi did a toe pay through the, the middle ropes. They're absolutely killing it and just going complete. You know, the crowd's going nuts. They're, it's they're the crowd going, has been molten. Yeah, the, the crowd's going nuts. They're, they're giving it everything. And they're basically outshining the younger guys. And it was without sounding corny it was watching it it was almost like a sort of like a, a, a wrestling version of like a spiritual experience that <laughs> you were seeing these two legends going at it and it just like it was just and you know but the end the ending i can't even remember the the ending but <laughs> it didn't really matter because yeah. it just at the end of it everyone just went nuts and it was just such an amazing match and it was like one of those sort of special things it was like it was like going to a concert and seeing Kiss perform Detroit Rock City. You know, it I, I, was like... I, my Hogan flair uh, um, analogy was probably terrible. What it sounds like you're describing, and now that I've listened to you talk about it, it almost sounds like that match from Arena Mexico a um, couple weeks ago with uh, Blackpool Combat Club against the CMLL guys, where yeah. you're getting like Brian Danielson and Blue Panther mm -hmm. in the ring together. Like, yes. that's probably what those fans were like. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. my God, I'm going to get to see those two. And then they had the match, and it was way better than you expected or even hoped is what yeah. it sounds like. Because so. they could have got away with basically just sort of yeah. doing a film thing and just, you know, just doing little spots and stuff. But they didn't. They gave us an, a a match that was worthy of the Noah name. And, 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 and this, is, this is June 2008, and it's just under a year before you know, Masawa yes. died. Yeah. Um, and I imagine when, you know, when that happened, like you probably were even more grateful, like are happy that you went and saw this show because yeah. I mean, that probably was your only chance to ever see him live. Yeah. And, and it, and it was kind of sobering because the move that he took that killed him, the, the sort of yeah. like, I think it was an over the top oh, thing. You, you he saw actually, it. In the... He actually did that in the match. Yeah. And so that bit of the match always stuck it has always stuck in my head because that was like a move. And it and it also it's that sort of thing that it's sort of like you it against you is sort of like respect for, for more respect for wrestlers when you see you know, but a guy who was as proficient and as good at each other that basically, you know, died. It it just makes you respectful of the fact that of what they actually do, the risk that they take and, it, and it's why whenever i hear someone ever do do a um a, a uf duck chant i always mm. hate that because you don't realize what you know and you're not respecting what these guys are actually doing just, just the things that they do is dangerous you know yeah and it's yeah. just yeah but yeah that that sort of it's a sobering thing but yeah but you, you're right i you know i i, I got to see it, it makes me appreciate more that i saw me sour at that time when i did and looking at the um, the cage match uh, listing, because when, when you sent me the poster, I kind of I pulled up the card and I was looking at it and I even found one of the matches. And uh, according to cage match viewers, anyways, the best match on the card was actually the uh, the GHC junior heavyweight tag team title match with uh, Brian Danielson and Eddie Edwards against you know, the other Kenta, just known as Kenta, and Taiji Ichimori. And, like, just listening mm -hmm. to that now, like, they could have this match today, and it would be incredible. Yeah. But uh, in that, 2008, it was... Yeah, I mean, that match is, without a doubt, the quality rise in the ring, the best match i ever ever seen live. Really? Was, okay. Yeah, abs absolutely incredible. I mean, and that was... That, that was a match that got the this is awesome chant back in the days when <laughs> this is when he said this is awesome still meant something Not, nowadays people basically <laughs> chant that pretty much like about three times a show uh but this was sometimes before was, they even lock up yeah yeah <laughs> yeah uh, but yeah this that match was just like that that was a match that basically i think ed, everyone sort of like hoped for like the 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 
I think everyone hoped for like a classic, you know, like sort of you know five star match. If it wasn't five star, it was uh, it was close to it, and it was just a, just an absolutely phenomenal match. I mean, Rose, I mean, Ken, um, Brian Danielson and Ken to it, but wrestled in Ring of Honor. They're great. I mean, Brian, Dan- they have mm-hmm. ke- great chemistry with everybody. But put those two together with each other, and it was just uh, explosive. So those two alone was worth yeah. watching that 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 match was absolutely in, incredible it's uh, and eddie you know, edwards to, to... eddie edwards back in 2008 was completely different like if you watch mm-hmm. him now i mean he's put on probably 70 pounds and he works a completely different style he's more of a hardcore wrestler uh, he still pulls out the moves every once in a while but back then i mean he's the first guy uh i think still the only um american to ever win the ghc title um so you know like they obviously noah thought highly of him and danielson i mean if he would have stuck around noah i'm sure he'd have been a multi-time champion um obviously we know what he's doing today taiji ishimori still kicking butt in new japan and kenta is not what he used to be but he's you know he's still he works a crowd like nobody else so um that sounds incredible and then in the co-main you also you saw jay briscoe um yeah. Do you remember that one? Because I know you, I remember you saying, like, I think we talked off air. You meant you said you didn't even remember some of these matches, but the Jay Briscoe, you remember that one? I, I do. That, that was okay. Um, yeah. I, I think originally both Briscoes were supposed to have been coming as a tag team, but I think Mark got injured. I'm pretty sure that I saw a, an actual lineup where they were a tag team, but uh, you know, so okay. we had to race the way put that, and it, it was it was okay. It was it yeah. was kind of like a it like quite was like um with it being sort of like the match before the main event, it was almost like it was sort of like calming the crowd down a little bit, especially yeah, after like, we had yeah. this sort of amazing match. But it was still a, a good match. I mean, at that time, uh, the both Briscoes were they were very different from what they are to, yeah. today. Obviously, they were more high flyers. They had very slim builds, and so it, it wasn't a, a blowaway match, but they still did some like sort of like you know really cool sort of moves and that. And it was also the only title match on the show, so you know it, it was you know it, I was, it, it, was, it was it was an okay match. I was watching. No, it was, it, wa- it was a tag match. It was a tag match as well. Okay. <laughs> I, I've been watching. I wasn't going to correct you, but um, <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Ring of Honor from uh, 2009, 2010 lately. So that's just after this. And yeah, Br- they were they were starting to morph into what they became. So Briscoe mm-hmm. was still like Jay Briscoe was still yet he, he had very like a, like a brush cut and uh like a beard but it wasn't like the full beard that you that you would see like a few years later it was just kind of like a little bit of a beard and uh but they and they were starting to i think they had the man up they were already doing at that Mm. time i don't know if it they were doing it in england but um and he was his wrestling yoshinobi kanemaru who is still around um and he is like now he's kind of almost almost like a comedy guy he's like i think they call him the drunk uncle Cause he always carries around a bottle of whiskey, but back then he could go. Um, so, you know, that was kind of cool. And you had, uh, you had Takeshke Morishima on this card. You had Junior Akiyama, Bison Smith, Nigel McGinnis was in an early tag team match on here. Yeah. Um, I, okay. yeah. So yeah, I wanted to talk about that one. Cause that was like one of the, um, the big pops of the show. Oh, because really? Okay. It was, it was Doug Williams and yeah. um, Nigel McGinnis teaming. And both of them, they were like the two top British uh, wrestlers for you know, oh. you know, you know, um, in popularity rise on like that sort of for that hardcore um, audience because um, you know McGuinness was obviously a big name because he'd been at Ring of Honor. In fact, when the Ring of Honor came to the UK, the, the um, he was like a focal point because he had a match with Brian Danielson, which was a unification match of the Ring of Honor title and the Pure title. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that match, but it was a yeah. really oh, good yeah. Year. That's a yeah, great match. But yeah, so um, but Doug Williams as well was really really popular. He'd been around, so he was like one of the top guys in the FWA when it became like popular. And he was a he was a great wrestler. Had a very British style, you know, just like beginning. So them two teaming together was like almost like for the UK a dream tag match, uh, tag team. And but what, what they did that was really cool is um, they came out to a song called Vindaloo uh, mm. by an artist called Fat Les. Now, you probably won't have heard of that over there, but in the UK, whenever the um, the World Cup is on, the, the Football World Cup, 
um, you always get bands and stuff doing like um, football songs to, to go along with it. And um, Vin, um, most of them, to be honest, are, are quite rubbish. Uh, but Vindaloo one is a really great um, sing along song. It's basically so. To, it's basically and it's very British as well because it's basically and, and the entire song is basically pretty much about uh, we all like Vindaloo, you know, because the British <laughs> like uh, the yeah. Indian curry. So it's basically just a, a big chant along that, that that fans can sing along. So they played that. So it was like a really British anthem. The the two of the most popular British wrestlers at the time they're teaming together, and the crowd just like erupted along with it, and basically all started singing the, the Vindaloo song, and they basically come out and they're giving it to the crowd. And it was one of those matches that you know the match itself was like really good. It wasn't as good as the other things on the card, but because it was two British guys, the crowd really got into it because us us Brits we get the like behind our um, yeah, our local. Yeah guys in, in any sort of sport so yeah so that again that that was like the the first big moment of the card where the crowd really like rose up and went nuts and that that was yeah, yeah. I, I still, in my head i still got the vision of mcginnis and um williams coming to the ring with that song that that's how big a deal it, it felt at the time yeah, Williams, I mean, he was obviously bigger in the UK than he was here. He, he did wrestle in Ring of Honor for a little while, and I, I fondly remember him. But, um, yeah, he was, he was real big. for a short time as well. He was, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, I was telling you off air, we uh, we, we used to get the British, um, British wrestling. I, I can't remember the name of the show, but uh, he was on there as well. And I think... I was looking up El Ligero, who's in the opener, and I was looking up his history around the time that I was watching. And I think the promotion might have been ASW, All Star Wrestling. Um, I there don't know. There is an All Star Wrestling, yeah. Yeah, so I think that might have been the one because I was looking at some of his matches and like the people that he wrestled, and it, it, it all sounded kind of familiar. So I, I think that was the one. Um, but we all, and he also had, and this one, my, my, I'm going to guess you you wouldn't even remember at the time but uh obviously zach saber jr was in the opener and obviously he became you know a huge out of everyone on this card i mean he's probably maybe you know for current guys probably second behind danielson um but you know he wrestled in the in the opener um any do you have any recollection of him or was that just kind of a name that just happened to be on the card i'll be honest but when actually sort of like we read the card in prep for this, I did see that name, and I have to admit, I I don't remember him. I do remember the match because it was like a six man. And yeah. It was one of these where it was basically, I, I think they were all sort of like young guys, and they were all basically like sort of going like fifty for you know, just it was like the first official opener, so they were basically going at it like you know, you know, fifty mile an hour, all of them. So. I, I don't remember him sticking out, but all, all of the guys in there, they basically gave a good match that got the crowd going. But yeah, I'm looking, I'm, at, like, uh, I'm looking at the ages here. And uh, like Z Sabre was like either 19 or 20. Mark Haskins was 18. Uh, you know, yeah. Luke Phoenix, he was a little bit older. Um, El Ligero, my guy, uh, was, yeah, looks like he was probably, yeah, 22 maybe so yeah very young in their careers um and the the name of the team uh hubba bubba lucha that's a great name uh bubblegum and el Legero. it's like it sounds like a name I do, WWE. I, I do remember one thing about that match and that shows what sort of crowd we had is um there was this section of the crowd that was obviously there to basically get themselves over and be annoying <laughs> Because as the match started, they basically all started chanting, let's go Daniels, let's go AJ, like this, oh, you know, oh. sort of thing. And the crowd, the, they probably got that out about three times before the entire crowd absolutely turned on this section. I and basically that. just started chanting to them, shut the F up, shut the F up, you know, just right. <laughs> and that, stop, and, and that stopped them? And that stopped it. And that to me nice. was like a great thing. It was like basically the crowd policing itself. And like we're saying, like, you know, we're not putting up with any bullshit. We're going, this is respectful. This isn't WWE. We're basically, you know, and that was to me was like a, you know, a great moment as well of sort of like a hardcore crowd saying, no, Shut that cut that up. shit yeah. out. Yeah. And you were, uh, and you're probably looking around like, yeah, these are my people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause that's you. I mean, yeah. I, I know you, and that's how you would have felt. So whether yeah. or not anyone else was chanting, you'd have been looking at them like, shut the F up. 
you yeah. know, and then you see the crowd doing it and you're like, yeah, mm-hmm. I like this. Just another thing as well, just, um, I basically ended up, because uh, I went by myself, I didn't really know anybody who would be interested in this. And I got sat with this um, Japanese couple. Oh, and wow. this, But this Japanese couple, they came and sat de- next to me and they had a baby with them. And wow. this baby was, this. I, I'm not very good at ages, baby, but this baby couldn't have been more than nine months because this baby wasn't able to walk yet. And so I kind of like inside a groan, oh God, because this baby... Once the lights go out, once it's all loud, they're going to get like, the baby's going to get scared. It's going to start screaming and that. This baby was the most well-behaved baby I've ever been sat by. Because this this baby, in the entire time, never grizzled, never cried. And just the entire time, its attention was just on the ring. It was quite spooky. It was if it, it was just like mesmerized by the big scary men sort of in the ring. It was just like, you know, he's sort of like, you know, this little hardcore wrestling fan in the making. Maybe the maybe the the couple was like related to one of the wrestlers and they go to shows all the I, time. I don't I don't know because well they they asked because they they was they didn't speak um very good English, and I obviously didn't speak okay. any Japanese, but they sort of said to me, like, they managed to say, uh, is Noah popular? And I oh, sort of okay. tried to okay. explain that, that as best I could. And they asked me who, which wrestlers I liked. And, and after that, the conversation pretty much came to, basically, I'd say, oh, Kenta Kabashi. And then one of them would go, oh, Kenta Kabashi, you know, the, the, the chop, chop thing. Yeah. And then I'd say, oh, I, I, I like Miss Sour. And they go, oh, Miss Sour, Miss Sour, like that, sort of doing the elbow. So for about five minutes, the, the conversation was just us to, to each other saying like a wrestler's name and then going, oh, yeah. yeah. So they were mentioning like American wrestlers like Austin. And I was mentioning like um, Japanese wrestlers that I like. So that was, so it was funny. It was like we, we understood very little about each other, but we had this common language of, wrestling that was able to sort of like we could basically communicate a little which again that was like one of those things i always remember about that show is being sat next to the only you know japanese people actually in the audience and that you know so yeah again just one of those like little sort of like wrestling fan memories that you have i'm I'm glad you i'm glad you mentioned that and we met at uh, not a wrestling show but an mma well i don't know if it was at the show it was probably before the show but we we uh, met at the the, uh, we, we met at the brazilian place the, the steakhouse, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's where, that's where I first met everybody, and we were yeah. sat next to each other. Oh, that's right, yeah. With and Todd Martin was right by us too, and, and we were going um, to the USC together as well, with, coincidentally enough. Yeah. All right. Well, that is almost we're almost out of time, but before we go, um, I wanted to ask if there's anything from your recent wrestling viewing. I know wrestling's changed quite a bit, but uh, there's got to be something recently that made you happy. And you can't use Cody and you can't use Sting because those are too easy. Something else. Right, okay. Um, well, last week, obviously, we had WrestleMania. Um, I had uh, well, there's two, there's two matches because I lost. I watched a lot of wrestling last week, um, and I'll try yeah. to be as quick as possible. One of them was seeing getting to watch Shayna Baszler um, in um, Bloodsport. I was uh, hoping to mention an, this. Yeah, yeah, she had an absolute awesome match with uh, Massa Slomovich. Have I said that right? Yeah. And, close, and, to, yeah. to me, and it was great because that's to me is the sort of thing that Shayna should be doing. You know, that, that she's got that MMA legit background. She's also she's got this tough as hell persona, and I absolutely love that match. I'm a really big Shayna fan. Uh, yeah, so so that really made me happy, and I would I would love it if there was more chance for her to do that in in WWE. But Shayna likes you too, by the way. But no, oh, <laughs> no. Uh, uh. but yeah. <laughs> But yeah, she. Um, but yeah, so I absolutely loved that. That made me really happy. The other thing that made me happy was on WrestleMania um, night two, if I remember correctly, and it was the uh, Ioski. I can't, I can't say that. <laughs> Ioski versus Bailey. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because oh, incredible. That, I, I don't think I think she's she's kind of not had a duel in WWE for for me. I think a lot of people don't sort of you know mention her a, a, a great i think she's underappreciated and i i do think that her as champion her getting to basically defend the belt on wrestlemania and having a great match um i, I think jerry feinstone said it last uh, really said it was a, a stardom worthy main event match and getting to see her have this match at wrestlemania um you know a 
with, with Bailey and show what she could do. That match made me really happy as well. So so on that weekend, vote zero, seeing two of my favourites, um, basically being being in there sort of like an environment that they were good at. Yeah, that that to you know those things that they made me really happy. And uh, for me, it's a, it's a quick one this week, um, and it was when on SmackDown when Paul Heyman and Solo Sokoa and Jimmy Uso were walking around backstage, and they went to the door that should have been the Bloodlines locker room, and Kevin Owens was standing outside of it, and it said "The American Nightmare" Cody Rhodes on it, and Paul Heyman's like, "Where are we supposed to go?" And Kevin Owens says. I think there's an open broom closet down the hall. I I just love yeah. that. It was so simple and so cute. And it made the main event of WrestleMania feel important because now there's consequences. You know, uh, they don't get to run the show anymore. So, but the, uh, I loved the Shayna um, match as well. And what I really, really loved was the reaction she got because when she was coming to the ring, the fans were chanting, holy shit, holy shit. Like they mm -hmm. couldn't believe it. And then as soon as they did the intros, the crowd churned on her and yeah. she was in her glory. She loved that reaction. You could tell. And oh, yeah. I think because like they were so happy to see her. And then now that she's here, okay, now we're going to boo her. And, mm -hmm. and, and she's like, oh, and I'm going to play into it. And it was great. And I hope we see yeah. more of it. Um, I think we will actually, because uh, I'd love to see her on that Japan card. I don't know if, you know, it's not like she's doing anything in WWE and I'm sure they could let her do it. Um, but uh, yeah, she, she kicked ass in that match. So, all right. So we're, we're done. We're out of time. And I want to thank you, uh, Daza for doing this. I really appreciate it. And I love the the story and uh, I'm going to check out that show. I'm going to, I saw the Danielson match already. I'm going to see if I can find any more and I want to hear that crowd. So um, I'll be back next week, a week from Monday. All goes well. My guest will be Garrett Gonzalez from fight game media and wrestling observer. So I'm looking for it. I don't know what he's going to talk about yet. Uh, so for Daza, Oh, D uh, Daza, before we go, talk about your podcast, uh, at the flicks. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, we, there's a, a podcast network called at the flicks that does basically movie type of shows. Um, I I'm on a couple of shows on there. I've got my own, um, uh, Daza's video in Polio, which is kind of basically talking about sort of, movies from the uh, the video age but also i recently i did a um i did a review of the i um iron claw movie uh which i did with two people who saw the movie that weren't wrestling fans so that kind of me being a wrestling fan and them no it was an in interesting basically sort of discussion and how we saw the film in different ways so that was uh, that's that's something i was really happy with how it came out so if you like um wrestling movies and you want to hear more about the iron claw uh give that a go but that's uh, yeah and it's flicks. real easy to find yeah just at the flicks uh flicks is spelled f-l-i-c-k-s and uh when i typed it into google it was the first thing that came up so um yeah check that out it's free and uh yeah so for daza i've been paul fontaine and this has been the joy of wrestling right